welcome to the third video lesson in the series for diabetes education. And this is where you're going to get your pathophysiology lesson to understand what's happening in your body. So what is prediabetes and type 2 diabetes? It's a completely preventable disease of our modern culture. It's a disease of obesity, poor diet, and too little exercise. We did not see this disease even over 100 years ago, like we do today. Diabetes and prediabetes begins with insulin resistance. So what is insulin and why do we need it? Well, insulin is the key that lets the sugar into your cell. Now, when you eat food, it breaks up into sugar, and that's what we run our bodies on. So basically, the way I explain to my patients, if you can imagine your bloodstream as a very long hallway in a hotel, you put people in that hallway, that's the sugar. Every person has a key, that's insulin. So you, you eat a meal, you put a lot of people into your hallway. Everybody puts a key into a door and everybody walks into a room. The hallway is now empty. That's the way your bloodstream should be. It should have very, very low amounts of sugar floating around in it. But when you have prediabetes and diabetes, the people start to build up in the hallway too, too much. Why? Because their keys are not working 100% of the time. So when all the people have to go into their rooms, the keys only work 50% of the time, which means the people stay in the hallway. Well, what happens the, not to the next time you have a meal? More people with keys come into the hallway. Now you've got a very crowded hallway, and not all the keys are working to let the people in. Just in time for the next meal, and it starts again. And if you have diabetes, your hallway is clogged with people, and none of the keys are working. That's type 2 diabetes. So what do we need to do in order to have that insulin or that key work more frequently, let the sugar or the people into their rooms? We need to get you back to insulin sensitivity. What causes insulin resistance? A big belly. Belly fat is the number one reason why people develop insulin resistance. And if you have enough people in your hallway, you're going to develop type 2 diabetes. So the diagnosis is made with diabetes or prediabetes as the sugar rises. The problem is, is that by the time people are diagnosed with either type 2 diabetes or prediabetes, this thing has been happening for a very long time. In fact, by the time someone reaches the level of type 2 diabetes, they've probably had the disease for anywhere between 10 and 15 years. What symptoms come along with type 2 diabetes? How will you know? Unfortunately, there's very few symptoms of type 2 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is a different disease, and I will be discussing that on another video lesson. And that does have acute symptoms. But type 2 diabetes and prediabetes is a chronic disease. You probably will have absolutely no symptoms, so you will not know you have it. The only way you will know that you have it is to see your doctor and have your blood tested. Now, what's the treatment for this type 2 diabetes and prediabetes? Well, you need to make sure that you keep your midsection of your body as lean as possible. Because again, belly fat starts the whole cascade. So it starts with blood sugar imbalances or insulin resistance. And when it's left unrecognized, it only will get worse. That's why I insist that all the people watching these video lessons understand that a A1C of 5.7 is the beginning of diabetes. Please know your A1C and do something about it so it won't progress on to type 2 diabetes. Because insulin resistance, which is prediabetes left unrecognized, will progress to type 2 diabetes. Too many people in the hallway, the keys don't work. If it's left unrecognized, this will lead to more weight gain, more high sugars, or more people in the hallway with keys that don't work. It's a vicious cycle. And how do you break the cycle? Diet, exercise, lifestyle changes. But you can't fix what you don't know, so you must know your A1C. The goal is to keep it in the normal range, which is less than 5.7%. And once it's gone to 6.5%, we're going to have to call you diabetes. You've landed in diabetes town.
Prevention is always best. Because once you've gotten the disease, that means that you're probably working on about 50% of your beta cells. The American Diabetes Association tells us that optimal is to maintain full beta cell function for a lifetime. But once your A1Cs have crossed 6.5, you're running on 50% or less. You've got to run your body, a full adult-sized body, at 50% of insulin production. And people wonder why they need to take medications and eventually go on to injecting insulin. I don't want that for you. I want you to catch this before it becomes an irreversible problem. Now, if you already have type 2 diabetes, maintain tight control for best outcomes. That means that you want to watch your diet. That means that you want to eat low carbohydrate and healthy fats, which are very satiating. It also means that you want to exercise. And you don't have to kill yourself in a gym. But you do need to move more. And it could just be a little bit more movement throughout the day. If you don't want to put time aside for actual exercise by taking a walk in your neighborhood, walking on a treadmill, swimming in your pool, throwing a frisbee with your dog, whatever the exercise may be, but just do it. And I also, you want to encourage full utilization of all the video lessons on this website. Watch them again and again so that you understand the DPP trial, which is a diabetes prevention trial, proved that metformin, which is a medication for diabetes, in conjunction with lifestyle modifications, reduces the progression from prediabetes to type 2 diabetes by 58%. But you can't fix what you don't know. And this worked for all ethnic groups, all ages, and provided long-term results. Another study that was done was called the DEPLOY study, the Diabetes Education, Prevention, and Lifestyle Interventions. And this was offered at local YMCAs throughout the United States. In fact, there were 2,700 facilities that participated across America. Find a YMCA in your town that will allow you to participate in the Diabetes Education, Prevention, and Lifestyle Interventions study. It had a partnership with United Health Group. Now the prevention of type 2 diabetes really should be more aggressive in many medical practitioners offices. But what we know through research is that only 25 percent of people who need diabetes education receive diabetes education. The National DPP study across America in YMCA's will help you share the costs with your employer and universities. It's on a can-pay basis, and the programs are approximately a year long. So the national partners are the American Diabetes Association, the American Heart Association, and the American Medical Association. So please look into a diabetes prevention program in your town or go to your local YMCA. Now another type of diabetes I'd like to talk about is called MODY, M-O-D-Y, and it's maturity onset diabetes of youth. This is a huge problem now because essentially it's type 2 diabetes in young people. This, is, this was unheard of only 30 years ago. We never saw type 2 diabetes in people younger than the age of 40, unless they were morbidly obese, and there were not many of them. But now it's becoming common, even in children as young as 8 years old. One study that came out of Australia in Diabetes Care Journal in December of 2013 compared young type 1 diabetes patients and type 2 diabetes patients over 20 years. Now, we, we know that type 1 diabetes patients, something happens to their body and destroys all their beta cells, practically all at one time. They need to go on insulin almost immediately to live. Type 2 diabetes is a slow progressing chronic disease of insulin resistance. Patients have plenty of insulin production, 
they just can't use their insulin properly. Again, the keys in the door don't work. This study showed that patients with type 2 diabetes had a worsening of their cardiovascular disease outcomes after only two to five years after they were diagnosed. And they also showed an awful lot of early kidney disease. That means that complications appearing in type 2 diabetes patients rather than the type 1 diabetes of patients occurred with less duration of the disease despite similar A1Cs. And after 15 years of following these patients, the risk of death was twice that with those with type 2 diabetes than with type 1 diabetes. So it looks like type 2 diabetes is a more dangerous and aggressive form of diabetes than type 1. So I can't stress enough that we must prevent your progression from prediabetes to diabetes if we can. And that if you already have type 2 diabetes, we need to manage the disease to the best of your ability. So find a practitioner who is willing to work with you. And please educate yourself on this website for diabetes education. This is Christine Olivieri, your paleo practitioner.